Okay, this video is for 3.7 examples continued on. Uh, we have 2b here, h of x equals 4x, all divided by x minus 3 quantity squared. So this is going to act like the, um, the behavior of 1 over x squared. Um, if we pick it apart and find our key information is how I'm having you. I just want you to get in the habit of writing this down every time if it's not there for you. You're going to have your local behavior. You're going to have your global behavior. So remember for local behavior you're going to do all three. Okay, look for all three, let's say. Okay, because it could be and or. We don't often have holes in the ones that we're working with, but we sometimes will. They'll kind of come up. So again, you can check these in Desmos. That would be probably pretty useful, but make sure that you can do them by hand so when you get to your next class, you're having the right tools for that, especially in a proctored situation. This is kind of unique for not proctoring tests in 141, just this term. So zeros, um, we're going to look at the numerator. Okay, so when is the numerator equal to zero? So we would have, I'm just going to write off to the side here, 4x, actually I'll just write it down here, 4x equals zero at x equals zero. Okay, so then we're going to have the point zero zero. Um, so we just plug back in and find that. Well we know our y is going to be zero right for that. So we're always looking for a point for the zero and there's just one. So now we have x minus 3 squared that we're going to look at. When does that equal zero for the asymptotes? Okay, so we have x minus 3, set that equal to 0, or actually, you know, we don't want it to equal 0, but we want our line to be written the right way. So it would be x equals 3 is our vertical asymptote. Okay, so I'm going to actually start sketching this stuff in. So we have our 0 is at 0, 0. So it's going to hit through there um, or maybe bounce, we'll have to see. And then we are going to have asymptote at x equals 3. So a vertical line. Okay, so we call that VA x equals 3 just to abbreviate. Then holes, we would look at if any of the um, factors over themselves. If, the, if I would have a zero over zero situation, just kind of put zero over zero, no. So none. Okay, no holes. So do make sure that you answer that question. So now we need to look at our global behavior. Do we have a horizontal or a slant asymptote? And so we're going to look at our powers. So we have this numerator is to the first degree and our denominator is to the second degree. So that means that we will have our horizontal asymptote equal, well it'll be a y equals zero because this will approach zero as the numerator um, it stays at the first power, the denominator gets bigger and bigger and bigger. It approaches infinity, right? So that's going to approach infinity. And so therefore, it'll approach, the whole thing approaches zero, okay? Okay, so that's how we're going to pencil that in here. Um, Kind of just over, maybe if I just use a really bright highlighter for that one, <laughs> we'll be able to see. 
Okay, so that's our horizontal asymptote. It's right here. Okay, y equals zero. Now I need to get some points put in. So that's kind of the tricky part with this. I need a reference point to just see how this is going to sit. Um, normally I would say, well, we want to hug the um, asymptote so we know that we have a squared situation. So we do know that our arrow here is up, then the arrow approaching this is going to be up. I know I can't cross a vertical asymptote. And I know this one's going to hug along there, but I could check a point to find out. I also know that I have to go through this zero. It's going to hit there. And I'm going to hug this horizontal asymptote, but I can actually kind of wiggle and wind around horizontals. It's okay. And this one actually does do that a little bit. And you can find out by looking at a point. Just do a checkpoint. And that will help you kind of pinpoint where that is. So we call it, a, you know, we'll call it a reference point. Okay. So I would just pick, um, say for instance, let's pick, actually it's not going to be that one. Um, let's pick negative two and plug that in. So we find h of negative two be four times negative two over negative two minus three all squared. And then that ends up being negative eight twenty-fifths. Okay, so I'm going to have it be kind of like right here is my point. Negative 2, negative 8 twenty-fifths. All right, so again, I'm not expecting you to be perfect with that, especially for us. Um, I don't ever need perfect, but I do want you to have an idea and that you could sketch it and see mine's kind of like not that beautiful, but that's okay. And you can check it in Desmos too for your homeworks and stuff like that. Or look at the keys provided. Make sure you're on the right track. And if you have questions, just email me and let me know. So that's 2B. Now let's look at 2C. So I've set this all up so with the grid ready and having your local and global behaviors, what you're going to look for. So really start thinking, okay, I got to look at when does the numerator equal zero? When does the denominator equal zero? Is there any situation of zero over zero? So just kind of get that in your head so you can start thinking, you know, numerator, denominator, maybe write yourself these little notes and then think zero over zero. Um, Know, when does that equal? Um, so, and the horizontal asymptote or a slant, we're going to look at powers. Okay. So we have polynomial over polynomial. They're both second degree. So you can start thinking, oh, I know what the global behavior on that is. Um, we also need to factor these. So, pause the video and go ahead and factor the um, rational, each, the numerator and denominator. Okay, so we're going to have x minus 5, x plus 3, over 2x plus 1, x minus 2. Now something like factoring is not quick and fluent for you. You want to work on that. So, you know, maybe kind of review those skills through some videos or websites or whatever, but um, you don't generally need quadratic formula or completing the square or anything like that for these type of problems. They're going to factor out in general very nicely for us in this section because that's how, you know, I've set them up and chosen the problems. So here we're going to look at when the numerator equals zero. So we would have x minus five equals zero 
or x plus 3 equals 0 to find our zeros. And that, remember, is a point. Okay? So we're going to have 1 at x equals 5, and then the y is going to obviously be 0, right? So that's how we set it up. So we'll write it as the point 5, 0. Then we have x equals negative 3, and that's my y is 0, right? Because I already that's how I set it up. And then I have negative 3, 0. And I'm just really trying to stress that because I see where people just kind of write those at, as lines. But that's not what I'm doing here. I really want it to be points. That's the common mistake that I see. Um, I'm going to have to kind of get rid of my little you know, calculations there, but hopefully you're getting this down by now. Um, and a lot of times you can just do it in your head just from looking up there. But that's why you have to be careful. Um, now we're going to have our vertical asymptotes. We need to look at when these denominators are going to be zero. So I would have uh, 2x equals negative 1 and then x equals negative 1 half. And that I do want to write as a line. So I have x equals negative half. I also have x equals 2 as 1, right? Okay, so we're going to write those separately. And x equals 2. So that is my vertical, or are my vertical asymptotes. So it's a little different now. I have two of those. Then holes, do I have any common um, binomials over each other? Any common factors that would lead me to um, a zero over zero situation? And I do not. Like, for instance, if, if I had a factor of um, x minus 1 in the numerator also, I mean, sorry, x minus 2, then that would be a match, and that would lead me to an undefined situation. That would be a whole, not an asymptote. But I don't have that on this one. So I'm going to write none, because I don't have any issues there. And then for global behavior, we want to look at the powers. So sometimes things are factored out for you already, so you'd have to kind of assume, well, just do that lead coefficient, because that's what we're looking at. So that it's the same, so that's understood to be a 1, so we're going to do the coefficient of the lead, okay, which is 1 half, and that, that's always going to be a y equals. So now I can go fill stuff in, and then we'll look at, like, how they twist and turn. So I have y equals a half. I'm going to set that horizontal in. So y equals a half is my horizontal asymptote. And then I have my verticals are going to be at um, negative a half. That's a little tricky. I should probably make this be more on the half. I'm going to, I was debating what I should do my scale at, but I think I'm going to try to just put it right in the middle there. Um, and then we have negative a half. So this is my vertical asymptote at x equals negative a half. And then I have another vertical asymptote at 2. So we're going to have kind of a weird skinny one there. So then we have vertical asymptote at x equals 2. And these labels are worth points, so do make sure you label them on your graph, not just to the side. Um, the side work here is just to really help m help me see the work that you've done and help you figure stuff out. Okay, and then we probably need a reference point on this one too, so we're going to think about that, but I'm just going to put that over here. Reference point. We'll get that in a minute. Um, but we can set our zeros in. So I'm going to have... A 0 at negative 3, 0. 
and then I have another zero at um, five zero. Okay, and again, we usually want to label those as well, but I'll put those on after. Um, then I'm going to get my line drawn through there. So I'm going to hug this asymptote and I'm going to come around here like this. And I know it has to be on that side because that's where my I go through the x-axis, right? So that's an important thing to think of. And the, these are powers of 1. So I'm just going to go right through at the, um, what's there? So now this one is going to act the same way. because ultimately I have a squared there. But I, I'm looking up here at the powers of how they're going to go through. Okay, so that is the two pieces. Now I definitely have to have something in the middle and how does that act? And it's not actually going to touch the x-axis, so that's a little odd thing. So that's where that reference point comes in. And we're going to put in something right smack in there. So I'm going to do f of 1. And that will come out to be um, just going to pop right into I guess I could do my factored version or just my other one. That's pretty easy. So 1 squared would be 1 minus 2 times 1 is 2 minus 15 all over 2 times 1 is 2 minus 3 minus 2 on the bottom and I get negative 16 over negative 3 so that's about 5. I'm just going to round off. Um, so I would have a point 1 and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and then I want to know like which direction it's going so I'm going to just plug in um, zero to see my y-intercept and I end up getting negative 15 over negative 2. It's about seven and a half. So I'm gonna have y-intercept about here and I know I can't cross the x-axis again so I know I'm gonna have to have a u-shape like this. Okay, just bounce up. So that's um, all the key elements. We do want to make sure that we label our zeros here as points. Okay, we have no holes. We've got our asymptotes labeled and we have our middle. It is hard to figure out like the middle piece and stuff. So I just really pick um, the reference points for that. Okay, so have a great day. Thanks for watching.